Hello again ladies and gentlemen, Saka here and welcome back to another episode of American Truck Simulator and it may look like we're playing farming sim, but we are picking up this double from Bushnell Farms here in Yakima and we are heading west to Port Angeles. So that's going to be back across uh, Highway 12, then we're going to get on the 5 for a bit and then just before Olympia, we're going to get on the 101 and head up north to Port Angeles uh, right there. I think off camera what I want to do is take the ferry as well to Everett and get that achievement, but that is where we are heading today to the tidbit with dry milk, $16,300 according to the, uh, the mission log, so that should be fairly good. Now my next question is, how do I get out of here? I mean, that's a way right there, uh, but I don't know if this trailer will allow me to turn around. Maybe I can go around. Um, that tree or something? Let's just take it nice and slow here and see if we can get out that way. This farm is uh, incredibly tight. Maybe it wasn't the wisest of ideas to take a double, but we should be fine. We should be able to just loop around uh, the farmhouse here and head out on the open road. Give a nice wide berth. And then shoot the entrance right there. All right, so everything should be clever. We should be uh, able to head on the road from here with little to no difficulty. Past the massive manure pit, I assume. And uh, looks like y'all got some weeds in your fields if I if my farming sim 19 knowledge is to be uh, tested here. Looks like we have a left turn. No one's coming. It's a closed gate. This might be a little tricky. But isn't this a nice scenic approach though? This is pretty, pretty awesome to have this in your farm. It kind of reminds me of uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 on approach to the plantation. Uh, how they have the the greenery over the entrance all right that truck was the only one coming let's get up to speed here and on we go so a six hour travel time it's going to put us there around 3 30 in the afternoon hopefully weather stays fair and the speed limit stays 60. oh and he was going to bushnell Pretty cool stuff. I don't know what a tidbit is. If it's just sort of like an odds and ends store by the sound of it. And a Volvo that looked uh, strangely like ours. Now that would be really cool. If you could see your own trucks on the road with your own trailers. That would be uh, really cool indeed. Not there yet though, but... That's one thing I liked about games like uh, X, the X universe, X3, and uh, what is the next, or this X? Is it X4? Keep left. Keep left. Will do. Thank you. Uh, I forgot your name, but we're not going to Yakima Main Street, that is for sure. Uh, but the X universe where you're dropped in a space sandbox, and you can do what you want to do. You could be a part of the military and do uh, jobs, sort of like Wing Commander space combat, killing pirates, fighting wars, that sort of thing. Or you could focus on trade and get ships with massive cargo holds and... Oh, crap. Yep, that's what I thought. You want to stop right on the bottom of an off-ramp, I tell you what. Well, we are going to go around you, good sir. Yeah, you, you, take the, you take the right lane. We're going to take the left. As long as the cargo wasn't damaged, that's the main thing. It's like 2% damage to our truck. No damage to the trailer. Outstanding. Then, uh, no skin off my back. But yeah, as I was saying, you get to, uh, if you wanted to run a transport company, you could a spacefaring transport company and you do actually see all of your ships 
uh, flying from place to place, picking up trades, dropping them off, running a bit of a, you know, of a business, and you can make a lot of money if you know what you're doing. It's one of those games that has an incredibly Keep difficult, right, uh, or a, a steep difficulty spike for sure. But once you get the hang of it, it's kind of like a paradox exit game right. that once you get your flow down and you sort of have a feeling of what you're going to do, yeah, we're going Go right to on. Natchez, heading west. Yeah, there's big old Yakima Hills. And then hopefully this blends. Now we're not going to blend on the five yet. We have to go a little bit before we blend on the five, but no worse for the wear. We'll just set our cruise control for 60 and head on. But yeah, I like the X games on the level of immersion of transporting things from place to place. And, you know, unlike this game where there are no competitors, there's no other trucking companies, there's no drivers you're competing head to head with. Um, in that game, oh crap, we're getting into town. What in the gravy is this? Is this uh, Natchez? Because it certainly isn't Yakima. And yes, there's a uh, Natchez Boulevard or whatevs. So, small town. Nothing to pick up or drop off here, but it's cool uh, that in American Truck that they, you know, place cities in between. Oh, I thought our lane was ending. Oh, it is. Where is the sign that said our lane was ending? Why does our lane end? Excuse me, I am coming over. Tell you what, this has been a difficult, uh, a difficult run already. Keep left and then turn left. Yeah, hopefully this semi does not go to Highway 12. Hopefully he keep. Oh, come on now. Turn left. Oh man, stuck behind hay bale monstrosity. A double hay bale monstrosity. I tell you, if he was playing farming sim, that's a lot of moolah on the back of that truck. So 55 over the Natchez River. Very cool stuff. Very scenic. I don't know if that's what it actually looks like, but awesome. And that's why I wanted to kind of take this trip as well as the, the scenery. One thing I didn't plan on, however, was Slowpoke Rodriguez in the right lane with his, with his hay. How about hay, get out of the way? Or is that straw? Probably straw. But get out of the way, good sir. We have things to do. And with this double, like we could pass him but I mean, it would take forever to do it. We've got the horses for sure. Speed limit drops to 50, but that's okay. We're never gonna hit that. I tell you, getting getting caught behind a slow poke when you know you're faster. That's where road rage comes from. It's like, at least go the speed limit. I'm not one for speeding. I'm not saying hammer down, disobey all traffic rules and just go for broke. It's not a racetrack, but at least get up to minimum speed. Well, you know, the speed limit is the maximum speed. You shouldn't go any faster than safe, blah, 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 blah. And I haven't seen any dotted lines to even attempt to pass. Because as soon as I do, I'm going to take it. Can't even really enjoy the scenery staring at a load of straw on the back of a a double, but we do have a nice little lake over here. I don't know which lake this is. And yeah, this is the part of Washington I am not too familiar with, and I'm not familiar with Port Angeles either. I've uh, been through Aberdeen once, and to be honest, I don't really remember hardly anything about it. So once we get to Aberdeen, I'm, I'm not gonna be of any help to tell you you know how close it is any Washingtonians out there watching would probably be able to but you know based on my analytics and how well this series does uh, 
the chance that one of four people who watches this series will not be from Port Angeles. So, you know, the chance of that happening is pretty slim, but still, if you're familiar with the area, I would appreciate a chime in and say, uh, what's up? How's it looking? Does, it feels like Washington or, you know, when you think of, well, there was a sign. Maybe we're in a state park or a, a reserve of some sort. What is this? Let me see. Wenatchee National Forest. Okay, cool. Nice uh, pull off places here to sightsee and take a look at the lakes. Unfortunately, we're not getting credit for driving by it, but. Oh, well we did. So that's Travel Washington, two out of three. We drove over the dam and now we've driven through the Wenatchee National Forest. And I'm trying to remember what the third thing, the, like the third landmark was. But I mean, this is a pretty steep drop off. Like that is just incredible. It's like if something bad happens over this guardrail, it's gonna be curtains for you. Nice chrome reflecting all the grass and whatnot. I do like the Volvo. Um, since I'm able to have the mirror in view at all times, uh, I like it. I just don't like trucks where you can't have the mirror in view without turning your head. Sort of like a modern day Formula One car where all you have in front of you is your halo and you actually have to turn your head to see your mirrors. Yeah, I, I just like looking at a quick glance out of the peripheral rather than an actual head turn. But I mean, in VR, it would be pretty natural to just peek on over. And that's one thing I haven't done lately is American Truck Sim in VR. To drive around Washington in VR and maybe look at the Tacoma Dome. And it's kind of like Google Earth. I think that when you go to a place in VR that you're familiar with and you know, you know, distances and you know how a place should feel. And then when you see it, you're like, yeah, yeah, this is the one. I have a feeling it would look the same, like driving past the Tacoma Dome. I'll be like, yep, that's how big the, T the Tacoma Dome was. But to be honest, I haven't played VR much. Uh, here lately. I still hop on every now and then and there are some games that I haven't played yet like Job Simulator. You know, I got that for uh, for my birthday in Star Trek Bridge Crew. I did enjoy playing Bridge Crew on the modern Enterprise and then, you know, the uh, I tried the old Enterprise, the 1960s Enterprise and that was interesting to sit in those chairs and just have the jewels and the gems in front of you to operate the controls. And none of them are labeled. Like, you you don't know exactly. I'm just gonna go, man. Double line or not, let's do it. Get past this guy. You are not gonna slow me down, good sir. And luckily, coming over the hill, no one was there, but yeah, now 60 miles an hour, that is what I'm talking about. Get up to speed, boys. Let's eat into this time. But yeah, I've been waiting for, say, the killer VR app to come out. The one that, you know, if it's gotta be on Oculus or, you know, if it's on Steam, capable of running Oculus. Wow, this is a pretty big lake. May Mayfield Lake or whatever. Man. That is something else, I say. But something like, I think I saw that there's a Star Wars VR app either coming or it's out or something. But I mean, Star Wars in VR with like a lightsaber in your hand would be like an ultimate nerd dream. Although I did, I don't know if I mentioned it in the American Truck Sim video, but I did do X-Plane 11 in VR and let me tell you what that is immersive when you can Turn use right. the oculus touch to actually manipulate the controls inside the plane like actual you know use the steering yoke so you don't need any peripherals if you have oculus touch because you control the plane using your actual touch controls 
which is like really, really cool. I enjoyed it quite a bit. All right, on I-5, trucking along. And we'll be on this all the way up till near Olympia. And then we'll dart on the 101. And I don't remember exactly what exit Fort Lewis and Olympia was, but we're at mile marker 72. And as fast as we're going, we should be there in a matter of no time. But yeah, VR is quite, uh, quite immersive when you have a game that's built for it. Aberdeen and Port Angeles, here we go. So our exit is coming up as I had assumed. But other than the VR stuff, I've been uh, talking right, to... And then exit right. Yes, will do. I've been talking to Brandon, uh, my best friend, the one who I Exit race right. on Thursdays with in the NASCAR Racing 2003 season. Um, I've talked to him about tabletop gaming on Tabletop Simulator because I've been wanting to run a Dungeons and Dragons campaign. Um, I actually just bought the uh, fifth edition core books just a few days ago. Uh, maybe even by the time you see this video, I'll already have them and I'll do like an unboxing video or, or something to show off the set that I got. But I've been wanting to get back into uh, Dungeons and Dragons. I haven't played in quite some time. I played a little bit of fourth edition, but as uh, life carried on and Adulting happened and everyone got busy. Oh, perfect. An unexpected event. Manual adjustment of your Keep navigation right. is and strongly right. recommended. And we can't go right. So hopefully our... Exit right. All right. We go from an hour 55 minutes to... Never mind. I'll two find hours 55 minutes. Another hour has been dropped on our journey. Now, a question is, now that we're rerouted, is it going to tell us to use that same exit? Okay, so this was the exit that was blocked. It's telling us just to rotate around and not do that. So I assume we're gonna have to go up the 101 west side because we are not going to be able to do this U-turn, come back and take this exit. It's going to be blocked, no matter what. So we might as well tell it, hey, uh, just go over here. It added another 15 minutes to our journey. We're gonna be there in three hours 14. And that uh, is okay. We have seven hours and 55 minutes left in our journey so we're not going to be late thankfully and that's a big plus but an interesting probably the worst place we could have possibly had a breakdown and we uh, get to go around let's say the scenic route so we're passing by Oakville the Oakville exit and I don't know if we're going to be driving through Aberdeen. I guess I should have paid more attention. Um, no damage. Yeah, we're going on the north side of Aberdeen. I wonder if we're going to see the come as you are sign or if we have to come in from the south or maybe come in from the north. I'm not sure what direction I came into Aberdeen from and saw the come as you are sign, but We'll see if we see it. And we'll have to remember, yeah, we're actually getting into like Aberdeen city limits here. So there's welcome to Aberdeen. Yep, come as you are, classic. So we're halfway through the Washington cities. We're passing the yummy restaurant. And here's a big old sign. Welcome to Aberdeen Gateway to the Olympics. 
Well, I'm a terrible athlete, so does that mean if I get to go through Aberdeen, I get a, an invite to Tokyo next summer? That would be interesting. All right, so we'll have to come to a stop here. So a detour through Aberdeen, we're not gonna be able to make a delivery. Luckily, these guys are getting out of our way though. Very cool. And I was looking on the map to see if there was a discoverable. And it doesn't look like there are any discoverables here. So we don't have to make like a quick detour. I thought that was a Ford dealership. That Eddie sign. It's like, oh, Ford's in the game. Nope. I know they would never do it. But if American Truck had passenger vehicles, you know, just so you could drive around and experience uh, the world of American Truck in a personal right car. And then turn right. That would be cool. Pointless, but cool. Um, I did that cannonball run. Turn right. At the end of... I guess it was right before the DLCs came out. Um, so that tells you how long it's been. Uh, but I basically went from the north west corner of California all the way down to the southeast corner of Arizona as fast as I could. Like disobeying traffic lights, speed limits. It was just, you know, foot to the floor. Hoquiam! Oh! And that is an inside joke, and I'm going to have to name this episode all oh, Hoquiam now. <laughs> and what's funny is I know, I, I've got a feeling that I know exactly what street I'm on. Uh, my One of my battle buddies uh, lived in Hoquiam. He was from Hoquiam? Oh, man. Beep, beep. That may be the thumbnail right there. But uh, we went to Hoquiam. And that, that's the reason I went through Aberdeen, was to see Hoquiam, so <laughs> I'm a little, uh, a little giddy. So, some warm and fuzzy. So, yeah, while, uh, here's the Hoquiam River. Oh. And we have an elevated bridge that was fully animated, really cool. Wow. I tell you, those American truck folks at SCS, they outdo themselves, I say. But yeah, my, one of my battle buddies was from Hoquiam, and he was stationed in Fort Lewis, and Fort Lewis is right in between Olympia and Tacoma, so as you could see, he could go home any weekend he wanted to. And uh, I, I went to his house once. So that... That, that, that street that we just drove through had a very similar feeling to the street that I actually like went to his house on. In fact, he, he, if he sees this video, he's probably going to see his house. That, I tell you, that's crazy. Like that, That's the first time in American Truck where I like truly felt I knew exactly where I was. And like, because I mean... You know, driving through Tacoma, it's like, yeah, there's a Tacoma Dome. I, I've been there. And um, the Port of Tacoma, I've been there. But, like, driving through Hoquiam, like, that was that was sort of an out-of-body experience right there. That was nuts. I even forgot what I was talking about before we, uh, before we went through there. Oh, yeah, uh, the Cannonball Run. Olympic National Forest. Uh, so, yeah, we, I went through the, the North west corner of California to the southeast corner of uh, Arizona completely disregarding all um, street, street speed limits signs like actually driving through cities I was like clipping curbs and using the shoulder and trying to stay on the gas as much as possible to see if I could do it in under eight hours or something like that or, or 24 hours there was a time limit that I had set and we would have made it if I didn't spoiler alert flip the car with like 30 minutes left in the cannonball run so if you wanted to check that out it's in this playlist it'll be before all the DLC and I forget exactly which episode it is but I called it cannonball run and the, the thumbnail is a police car it was a, a Skoda police car that I downloaded and used 
But that was real, real good fun. Real good fun indeed. So yeah, an hour and 47, had that exit not been closed, uh, we would be pulling in about now, but then we would have missed Hoquiam and uh, the north side of Aberdeen. So crazy, crazy stuff. Another river. I'll tell you, this is the, the episode of rivers. We're passing over so many. And I imagine Washington has a crap ton of rivers being right next to the ocean. It's sort of a... I wouldn't think it's a delta like uh, New Orleans and Louisiana, but you know when you've got the ocean right next to you, you've you've got a lot of water. Uh, definitely not like here at home, where we're in the Midwest and the only water we see, 45 zone ahead. Now thank you for telling me. How cool is that? We can actually prepare. Kalop, Kalalock, Kalawalwak, Walk, Waka Waka. I don't know. But we are about to the uh, the point where I set that GPS marker. So indeed from here we are um, guided by GPS once more. Automagically and not manually. Oh, that is cool. Nice. Now call me crazy, I'm not sure, but I think I remember seeing that. It was late at night when I drove through here. The one time that I did come through here, it was like, you know, 10 o'clock. And funny story, I was supposed to go, but I was forgotten. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, it was this big thing to do. Hey, let's, uh, let's invite, you know, these people to head out to a, um, hello forks, to head out to a, a cabin in woods very similar to this. And that's why uh, I went through Aberdeen and Hoquiam because that was, this was the road we took to get there. And, you know, we were supposed to leave in the afternoon. Everything was awesome. And then like an hour and a half goes by past the time we were supposed to leave. And all of a sudden, and this was, like at the cusp of the cell phone age. So not everyone had a cell phone at this period in history. It's not like, you know, a group of 10 people, you've got at least 10 cell phones. No, 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 a group of 10 people, you'd be lucky to have two or three cell phones between everybody. Come on, get off the road. So it's not like, you know, my group, could have easily contacted me. And I, I don't even remember if I had messaging back then. In fact, I probably didn't. There was like, SMS was 15 cents a text or something like that, ingoing and outgoing. So if you got on a massive conversation of text messages, your bill went sky high. Um, plus the reception out here, as you can imagine in the, in the dawn of the popular cell phone age, wasn't that good. So they actually had to drive back into cell phone range to call me and say, yeah, sorry, we, we made it like a quarter of the way there and realized that you weren't in the car. Now, as loud as I am, you would think that it, that would be a difficult thing to do is forget me. But, you know, I, I was, you know, I had come to the conclusion that I was forgotten and I was a little miffed but boy I was ticked when they came back and got me it's like why even bother coming to get me obviously you didn't do a head count and it took you an hour to realize I wasn't there so yeah I was pretty steamed that particular trip I have footage I mean, I, I actually have documented it on camera and still have that video to this day. <laughs> so, uh, but I mean, looking back, it's, it's a good time. Like, there, there are far worse things in the world. And if that happened to me now, I don't think I'd be so miffed. But it's like, this, this party, this, this get-together was planned months in advance. I mean, we planned it in Iraq. 
that when we got back to the States, we would, we would do this thing. We would get a cabin up here in the woods away from civilization and all of us would, you know, have a great time. And then I wasn't a part of it. Uh, so yeah, it was kind of an inside joke, uh, for, for the rest of the time. Cause I was, I was still had a year and a half left in the army at that point with the same guys, hey, here's Port Angeles, with the same guys that I was supposed to, you know, go party with. So I didn't let it go. And as you can tell, like 12 years later, I'm still a little miffed. That's all good though. I wouldn't trade those times in for anything now. Like looking back, like those were still some good times. Like I, I am not mad. I was at the time, for sure, but not now. Water under the bridge, and as you see from Washington, there are many bridges that the water can go under. Truck Route 101, is it closed? <laughs> so yeah, I, I don't think I've ever been to Port Angeles. This is completely out of my wheelhouse. None of this looks familiar. Um, I'm gonna have to ask my battle buddy, what, what city? was that cabin even in because we may have driven by that particular area. I do remember it was over, it was shortly after New Year's because the New Year's decorations was still up from the party before. And this was like in mid January to early February. And you know, Washington, it gets snow, but more often than not, it gets rain. And as you can tell from the size of those hills and the trees, when it rains, it get it would probably get very muddy and very flooded and very quickly, and boy, did it. Like, that that next morning, there were only a few, like, Turn most left. of the cars were stuck. And, like, the only way to get back out of it was to put on fishing waders and walk out to the road. All right, where is our drop-off? Is it around back? I believe it is. But yeah, we had to wear fishing waders to walk to a car that did not get flooded in just to make it back on time. And boy, that was a, uh, that was an interesting, say, 24 to 48 hours for sure. All right, let's pull it in as straight as possible. I don't think this thing is going to round out quick enough to be straight by the time we get to the marker. We may just have to press enter on this thing and park it. I'll try to get over here and let the trailing trailer get over and then do some one of these numbers to straighten it out. I don't know if we're going to be... Yes, we're on the mark. Detach it. Do it. And that was an all-day trip. We're actually, like, really tired again. But 357 mi miles, 8 hours. It's a good thing it wasn't an on-time delivery. And one more mission, ladies and gentlemen, one more delivery, and we will level up to 35. Let's take a look and see what kind of jobs are coming out of Port Angeles. Uh, probably in the meantime, off camera, I'm going to drive to that uh, ferry and take the ferry across. But coming out of Port Angeles is Aberdeen just up the road. So two, a couple to Aberdeen, one to Yakima, a bunch to Yakima. Colville. Now that would be interesting. It expires in 36 minutes, but hopefully this tidbit has another run to Colville. Because take a look at this road across the ferry, up and over past Everett, through OMAC, and then over to Colville. We can knock out three cities at once and be left with Longview, Olympia, Bellingham, and Kennewick. But that is going to do it for me in this episode of American Truck Sim, ladies and gentlemen. Like, share, and subscribe if you are so bold. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you for the next American Truck Sim video. Take care.